Okay, so we have our sketch. We have it cropped. Now we are saving it. We haven't resized it yet. And I like to save it by going to File, Save More. Save PSD. It just kind of gives you all the, the best information. It's only in the kilobytes. And that's one way of knowing that this is not large enough yet. Right, It's just a screen resolution image that's then cropped down. And it will show me the, the name it will give it. It will download it. That download is going to come to wherever our downloads come on your computer. For Mac, it's to the downloads folder. Then I open that up, and I'm going to move it to where I want to save it, which might be the desktop or it might be my assignment folder like here right so then because these are the same name with the same format because i've already done this in the last video it's gonna ask to replace it and that's fine i know what it is okay now i'm just going to show you i'm going to mark it with yellow because that's how i usually mark my my files that i'm working on and then i'll mark this one just my sketch with orange because that's the the online format that went onto canvas and by putting my sketch on Canvas, I'm already acknowledging the deadline. So even though this is due next class by 11.59 on Monday, so we have a lot of time, um, if I'm at all worried about being able to work on it and I want to be able to resubmit the assignment later by submitting my sketch already, I've acknowledged the deadline. And I know I'll at least get one point on it and then be able to improve on that in the future. Especially if you're having connection problems today and you still have to gather references and you have to find a good computer to work on and all of that. Just make your, your first goal posting that sketch. Okay, so now I've opened it or, and saved it in PhotoP. It downloaded. I moved the download to where I want it to save. Now this is the, the PhotoP trick. Close PhotoP. Reopen it. And then drag the PSD file that you saved into it so that it opens in PhotoP. And that way, as you make changes, you can hit Command S to save it. You don't have to do the whole save more anymore. It's already saved as a Photoshop file, as a PSD. And it will update wherever you opened it from. So this prevents it from making lots of duplicate files in your downloads folder. Okay. And it's nice that the default tool settings for PhotoP is to have your layers here and your history here. Very helpful for what we're doing. So I just went one history state back before I, I did the graffiti on top of my sketch. Now this sketch is very helpful. But what's missing from my sketch are the things that I posted into Canvas or that you might have in your sketchbook, right? Like that this is part of a mushroom uh, jungle and that this is could be celery or fennel and that this is broccoli hills and a beet sun. So it's good to have both. And so I want you to post your full sketch with all of your notes to Canvas. But at this point, we've cropped it down. So it's just your image parameters. The reason we did that is so that now we can set its pixels to be print quality. So we're going to go to image, image size. And we've done this before, but this time we're going to be taking whatever our cropped sketch is, and we're going to be forcing it to be at least eight by 10 inches, not pixels. So in PhotoP, you have to change it from pixels to inches. And then the width here, which is only 0.68 inches, I'm going to change to eight. And then if I click off of it, it's automatically because this, um, the aspect ratio, you know, which is the height to width ratio is locked. That, that chain link is locked. We want to leave it locked and clicked. It's going to automatically make my height 13 inches then. And is that, is 8 by 13 bigger than 8 by 10? Yes, it is. So I'm good. And then for pixels per inch, it needs to be at least 300. 
And if we want to be fancy and have a few extra options so that we can print it a little bit larger if we need to, we can make that studio resolution, which is 350. But this is where freeware has its limitations. Because we are using a browser-based program, it has to use the running memory of the browser in order to do these things. So my computer has a strong enough interconnect, internet connection and a strong enough uh, processor. You know, I'm using a new Mac that has 16 gigabytes of memory built in and an M2 chip. And it basically has enough RAM to really let PhotoP run like Photoshop would. But if your computer starts to lag and be a little bit slower, close any programs that you don't need open, like close preview or your image viewer, close Word. Don't close Zoom so that you can hear me unless you need to. And then you can even close your internet browser, right? Oh no, you can't, sorry, photo P's in your internet browser. <laughs> so basically try to preserve memory as much as you can. And then the, the very, the very minimal size you should have is 8 by 10 or larger by 300 pixels per inch. And PhotoP should be able to run that and save that. But we're going to start using a lot more memory on these assignments than we did in our exercises. Okay, now, how do we know that it's as large as we said? Well, we can always go to image and image size. And we can check the inches the the pixels per inch that is what resolution is the physical dimensions and the pixels per inch we can also just to look go to file save more save psd psb just to see how much memory it's taking so before it was in kilobytes right now this same image is 87 megabytes which is quite large and that's what it should be i don't need to save it though if I want to save it, all I have to do is hit Command S or just go to File Save. And then it will automatically update where I opened it from, right here. Though it doesn't look any different, this file is now a whole lot bigger than it was before. In fact, with all of the, the Finder data, it's actually 91 megabytes. And then remember to ask me any questions. It's important you have the right number of pixels before we start bringing our photos in. So now, the first one is supposed to be inch. The second one is supposed to be pixels per inch. And the last one is supposed to be billionaire or range, closest range or clo uh, nearest neighborhood. Hmm. Oh, okay. Got it, got it, got it. Billionaire. So, yeah, it's, it's bilinear. Oh, I'm and, so sorry. No, no, no. Sounds stupid. Oh. No, no, no. I love it. I love it. It's going to make it so we all remember it, right? <laughs> and really, these are not all that different. It's just when you resample, the computer is having to create or take away pixels, right? If you don't check resample, then no matter what you put in for its size, the pixels will stay the same. So watch what happens. You, you don't do this, but watch what happens. If I uncheck resample and I put in 16 inches, then sure enough, the dimensions are 16 by 27 inches. But look what happened to the resolution. It's no longer 350. Instead, it's half of 350 because I just doubled the, the physical dimension. So that's the exact same number of pixels as before. But if I hit resample, then it's able to actually increase the number of pixels like it did from my sketch. So now if I zoom in on it, you can see how blurry the edges are because it had to create a whole lot of pixels to make it this resolution. So those different options, bilinear, bicubic smoother, it's it's how it decides if it if it can't match like the exact number of pixels, especially if you're making it smaller than the original. It's just different methods for for how it, it makes that decision, like the closest, nearest, that kind of thing. 
But the defaults are always just fine unless I tell you otherwise. So yeah, keep it on bilinear. All right. So yeah, you can always check image size. You can see the dimensions are there. You can also check how much memory it's taking by just going to save more and just looking under save PSD at the size. And as long as it's at least 8 by 10 by at least 300 pixels per inch, you're good. Okay. So, if we brought in our our photos now, I'm going to show you a different way to do it. But if we did it, they would come in at print resolution. So let's say I like bring in the sky. It will come in, and this sky is not huge. It's only a thousand pixels, but this shows us the pixels. You can see the actual pixels in the ruler. This shows us those thousand pixels. And because it's a sky, that's the minimum size, right? Because it's the sky, if I have to stretch that bigger, then the computer has to actually make up pixels and it will look a little softer than it needs to. The bigger problem is when I start bringing things in like my Swiss chard jungle that it just fills the space and I don't really have a lot of room to maneuver it, right? So instead of doing it this way, I'm going to go back in my history before I placed these. I want to give myself not just what I call a pixel space where the actual finished digital art will, will be created, but I want to give myself a working space around it. So think of it this way. Compositing is like collaging, right? We've torn out a bunch of pages from magazines and we've made a sketch for how we want our collage to come together. But now we need a desk, like a drafting table, with enough space to layer our different pieces of the pages that we're going to cut from. And then we'll cut and then we'll place them onto our sketch. So we've got to give ourselves that tabletop. And that's what I call our working space. So to do that, we now go to image canvas size. And this grows the pixels around our given pixel space. So I'm going to change it to inches. And it's going to show me the inches of what I cropped to, right? It's not going to show me the resolution, but it'll show me the inches. And now I want to grow the space around it to 30 inches by 40 inches. Why 30 by 40? Because that's the largest size that a professional printing press can print. So it's a good professional number to know. And because mine's vertical, not horizontal, my width is 30, my height is 40. If this was horizontal, my width would be 40, my height would be 30. It just gives me some working space around it. I'm not going to click on anything else. I'm going to let it grow from the center, and I'm going to say OK. Now, Photo P is interesting in that it will show me empty space with that, that grid, the gray grid of empty space but then it will also show me what i had thought i had cropped out which was parts of my sketch so that's why i needed the guides now i'm going to create a new layer this is just to have a good working space and i'm going to go to edit at the top of the photo p options fill i'm going to change the fill color to gray at normal at 100% and say OK. That's going to fill the whole thing with the middle gray. Then I'm going to move that middle gray layer underneath my background layer. And then I'm going to use my rectangular marquee selection tool, which is underneath the move tool. And I'm going to let it snap to my guides like so. And then I'm going to hit Command J once I have the background layer selected. And then I can turn off that background layer, which is my sketch.
This is all just to get some gray working space. One nice advantage.